Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. IRS reminds taxpayers, choose a tax professional carefully. More beautiful than I'd ever imagined. That's right. Choose the tax preparer wisely and be nice to them. Because if you choose poorly, this certainly is the cup of the King of Kings. Eternal life. You don't even want to know what the iris will do to you. What is happening to me? That's, that's the video I send out every time someone complains about my fees. And I'm pretty sure the government made that gaudy anti-holy grail cup with our tax dollars. And then stored it away in some kind of top secret location. <laughs> However, somehow they recently found it in Joe Biden's garage. As a paperweight on top of some top secret documents revealing that JFK was actually killed by some kind of crazy progressive academic deconstructivist pedophile. Which is why they had to cover it up, of course. You know, because you know, they, they don't want to cause any kind of harm or commit any kind of inadvertent microaggression against the crazy progressive academic deconstructivist pedophile community by prosecuting someone that just happened to be a part of it, you know? And doing that just because, why? Because some president got shot? That wouldn't be right. Anyways, luckily, we've been assured that having the top secret anti-holy grail misplaced and used as a paperweight on top of some of the most sensitive documents in U.S. history is a totally common occurrence. It's just normal document sorting error that happens like all the time. I mean... This stuff is totally taken seriously. There's nothing to see here. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, move on. Nothing to see here. Please disperse. Nothing to see here, please. There's no there there. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I've, there's no there there. Thank you. Unless you count like the top secret stuff as like a there, which is located, you know, over there uh, in the corner of Joe Biden's garage, holding down the top secret documents, which have some strange circular rings burnt into the top of them. Almost like somebody rested the bowl of their crack pipe on top of the top secret documents, using the documents as some kind of coaster so as not to burn the coffee table with their crack pipe. But still, even if there is a there there, these aren't the theirs you're looking for. Let me see your identification. You don't need to see his identification. We don't need to see his identification. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Move along. Move along. IR 2023-13, January 24, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded taxpayers to choose a tax return preparer with care. Even though most tax return preparers provide honest quality service, some may cause harm through fraud, identity theft, and other scams. So let me just give you my overall recap on the tax return preparation and the help with it. I would think that most of the time these days, most people don't want to prepare the tax return by hand because even with the simple tax return or low income tax returns, they are becoming quite complex due to the refundable credits. It used to be at one time you would say, hey, if my income's below a certain threshold, maybe I don't even file a tax return. But even then, you can't really answer that question definitively because of the refundable credits. You might get a refundable credit. The refundable credits are quite complex to calculate, those being like the earned income tax credit and the child tax credits. And so at the least, you would probably want tax software. That's where you might be using the free filing software to help out because that gives you kind of an interview process to, to give you a little bit more assurance that you're going through the, the information properly and picking up the available credits if they're available and entering the data properly. Now, if you get above a certain threshold in terms of income, then you, you not only have the needs of preparing the 
tax return for the current year, which might be complex in and of itself to the point where you might actually want advice for doing that. But you're also in a situation where you have different cash flows and you might have questions about business questions and other kind of things that would be relevant to tax planning. So when you have a tax planning situation and you're not just trying to, to prepare the tax return, lower income situations, oftentimes there's not as much tax planning we can do, even though because there's not as much income flexibility and so on. But even but even still, the tax returns are somewhat complex and therefore you probably want to at least use the software. As the money gets larger or more income, then there might be more strategies that can be taking place with regards to it. And then you probably want to be hiring someone that can help you with future tax planning, not just the current need of preparing the tax return uh, in the current year. And then of course, the types of people that you might want to help with that will differ depending on your particular situation. Some kind of some tax preparers are specialized more on in individual taxes. Some are specialized more on more on uh, larger income situation tax returns. Some have more experience with business related things in terms of a sole proprietorship or different entities like a partnership or a corporation and that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll dive into that a little bit more as we read through here. So when hiring an individual or firm to prepare a tax return, filers need to understand who they're choosing and what important questions to ask. A taxpayer's uh, needs will determine which kind of preparer is best for them. Whether taxpayers regularly use a tax professional to help them file a tax return or have decided to work uh, with one for the first time, choosing a tax professional carefully is important. Taxpayers are ultimately responsible for all of the information on their income tax return, regardless of who repair prepares them. So you might think, hey, and this is a common kind of thing because the system is kind of set up so that everything is automatically done. So it kind of seems like you're not the one that's responsible for anything, right? Because it's like, well, the, the employer is the one that's responsible for withholding my money from the paycheck, even though you're the one that gives them the W-4 and so on. But it kind of seems like, well, they're kind of doing that. And then they're responsible to give me the W-2, which they gave to the government. So I really have no control over that. It's basically automatic. The government can make the tax return themselves and if i hire a tax preparer or even if i use the software you're kind of thinking you might get a mindset of thinking well that's now it's on the tax preparer it's not my responsibility but it is ultimately your responsibility still even though everything's kind of automatic so when you hire a tax preparer you're hiring them in essence as your agent they're doing work on your behalf and if there's an error in it then you're going to be primarily responsible so you would like to hire someone that can help you out so in other words, if someone's saying, hey, I'm going to get you a massive refund and they do the tax return to get you a massive refund and they did you know, things that they shouldn't have, positions they shouldn't have taken to do that, it's what if the tax preparer just disappears next year, right? Then that's more of a scam situation, right? Because now they're trying to sell their services based on getting a massive refund instead of doing the tax return properly and it's our job as you know the taxpayers to to weed out that that kind of scenario that kind of scammy kind of stuff you're looking for someone who has a long-term reputation of doing taxes for a long period of time or something like that because because that's the difference between a business and a scam it's not just making money in the short run people that are making money in the short run run are that that are going to go that are going out of business or leaving town when they when it finds out that that what they're providing is is not good then it, then you have a problem it's like the the disney corporations right now and so on you know people are finding out that the stuff they're making isn't good it's almost like a scam they're feeding off of their goodwill their good name and in the long run not a good strategy same thing with the with the tax return preparation if someone's trying to get business based on giving massive returns at some point there's going to be problems because when the audit happens in the future to, to the clients then they're not going to be able to to withstand the positions and hold them up and then you've got everything hits the fan but in any case when choosing a tax professional the irs urges taxpayers to visit irs.gov there's a link to that here the choosing a tax professional page there's a link to that it has information about tax return preparer credentials and qualifications there's a link to that here the irs directory of federal tax return preparers with credentials and selected qualifications there's a link to that can help identify many preparers by type of credential and qualifications so if you're dealing with someone 
you know, there's tax preparers and, and there's people that have CPAs and stuff. And so the question is, and there's enrolled agents. So you probably, if you're looking at an en enrolled agent, oftentimes you're looking at someone that specializes in tax preparation, uh, individual tax preparation. Oftentimes a CPA firm is, is, is usually something that's, that's good. CPAs had to go through a lot of like business kind of stuff in terms of accounting kind of stuff. So if you have business related stuff, oftentimes they're good to help out with, with that sole proprietors, LLCs and so on. If you get a lawyer that's, that actually does tax preparation, they're usually going to be more expensive and are usually more specialized in particular areas, possibly setting up things like uh, partnerships and, and LLCs and S corporations. You want to be careful though, uh, with someone that's really specialized because obviously the advice they're going to give you is that you should do the thing that they're specialized in, right? So that's kind of one of the downfalls of being hyper specialized and trying to get advice from someone who, I mean, if you get advice from someone who makes all their money by setting up S corporations, it's not surprising that they're going to try to convince you to set up an S corporation or an LLC or something like that. Not to say that that's wrong advice is just to say, that it it's you know that's what they do so it's not really you know they're going to get paid for it. okay in any case warning signs by law anyone who's paid to prepare or assist in preparing federal tax returns must have a valid preparer ident tax identification number there's a link to that here paid preparers must sign and include their ptin on any tax return they prepare now oftentimes the fact that the tax preparer does that is good because it holds them accountable to some degree so it gives you a a little bit of relief, but it also leads to lends itself to this idea that the tax preparer is the one that's responsible, as if they're the representative of the IRS or something, and, the, and you're going through an audit by by giving your information to the tax preparer. That's not the case. You know, the tax you're still responsible for the tax return, even though the IRS is collecting the information by the paid preparer as well, and they can you know run into troubles. <laughs> if they don't put that information on the tax return. So if they don't put their identification number on the return and you're paying them, that's a flag that something doesn't look right. So not signing a return is a red flag that the paid preparer may be looking to make a quick profit by promising a big refund or charging fees based on the size of the refund. Taxpayers should avoid these unethical ghost tax return preparers. Now remember, and and this, they, people often think, well, that's the, like, I, you, you hear people arguing, well, that's the, the dangers of the capitalistic market and this is with these people, but this isn't really, that's not really a business when people are doing this. Just want to point that out. That's, that's a scam, right? The business is the guy that's going to be there or gal or whoever's doing the tax preparer, the tax preparing for a long term period, trying to make money over a long period of time. If the goal of your quote business end quote is to make money for like four months and then leave town, that's not a business. That's a scam. So a ghost preparer is someone who doesn't sign tax returns. They prepare unscrupulous ghost preparers often print the return and have the taxpayer sign and mail it to the IRS. For electronically filed returns, a ghost preparer will prepare the tax return but refuse to digitally sign it as the paid preparer. It's like, why won't you sign it then? If, you're, if I'm paying you and you're the paid preparer because they don't want the IRS tracking them, that's a bad sign. Tips for selecting a tax return preparer. Here are a few tips to consider when choosing a tax return preparer. Look for a preparer who, who's available year round. If questions come up about tax return, taxpayers may need to contact the preparer after the filing season is over. So if there's like some new tax preparer rolls into town and has all these good promises of getting you massive refunds, then, you know, they might smell you some snake oil while you're here too. You know, that doesn't sound good. You want them to be there like, like when you get, when you get a, when you run into a problem, that would be nice if, if, uh, if, if that could be the case. So review the preparer's history, check their better business bureau. There's a link to that here website for information about the preparer. Look for dis uh, disciplinary actions and the license status for credentialed preparers. For CPAs, check the state board of, of accountancy's website and for attorneys, check with the State Bar Association. For enrolled agents, go to verify the status of an enrolled agent or check the IRS directory of federal tax return preparers. So there's a lot of different credentials. They just, you know, went over here. You've got you've got the 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 lawyers, you've got the California board, the the, the CPAs, 
and the enrolled agents, and they all have their own kind of organizations that you can check to verify. And again, to choosing between them, which one of those should I choose from if I'm looking for, you would think the enrolled agents usually are, li there's a little bit less, less uh, that you need to get in that license. So it might be a little bit cheaper oftentimes, but it depends on the experience of the enrolled agent. And again, you would think they would be more focused on individual tax returns, not so good with like bookkeeping needs. If you have a business situation and whatnot, and possibly some accounting work needs to be happening or business strategies that deal with setting up stuff that has to do with businesses, then the CPA, oftentimes they're good in that area. And again, attorneys are usually specialized in a particular area. They're usually more highly specialized and more highly paid for a particular area. So they're more expensive oftentimes because of that specialization but you wanna be careful on the specialization, like I said before. So ask about service fees. Taxpayers should avoid tax return preparers who base their fees on a percentage of the refund or who offer a deposit all or part of the refund into their own financial accounts. So if they're saying, hey, we're gonna deposit some of your refund into our account, that's not how it's supposed to go. So be wary of tax return preparers who claim they can get larger refunds than their competitors. So if someone's basing their entire pitch that I get better refunds than anyone else, is that because they're smarter than anyone else or because they're doing, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to think that they've got to be taking very more extreme positions. And just the fact that they take more extreme positions and you get the refund within 21 days, or whatever, doesn't mean that you're not going to get audited because there's a three year window that you, you, you got to, you're going to sit, you're going to be nervous. For, you should be nervous at least for three years. You may not be, may, may, maybe nothing, will, but you, you should be nervous for at least three years because then the, even if, even if someone did extreme positions because you could get audited within that time frame. So again, you would think that that's a, that's a red flag if someone's saying that. So ensure the preparer offers IRS e-file. The IRS issues most refunds in fewer than 21 days for taxpayers who file electronically and choose direct deposit, provide records and receipts. Good uh, preparers ask to see the documents. They'll also ask questions to determine the client's total income, deductions, tax credits, and other items. So, so you, you know, if, if they, if you just give them the, the numbers and they don't want the documentation, you know, that they're not, that might happen, you know, and they might not have all you mean, you know, they're going to depend on you for the information. But generally, they you, you would think that you'd want the documentation to support. And you don't want a situation where they're taking extreme positions and ex ignoring the documentation so that they can say, well, I didn't know the documentation is different, <laughs> right, than what I actually put on on the return, right? They can't, they, they, because if you give them the documentation, and they put something different than the documentation, on the tax return now they've they've had intention or you know at least they have to explain why they put something on there different than what's on the documentation and that so do not hire a preparer who, who e-files a tax return using a pay stub instead of a w-2 form this against is against irs e-file rules understand the preparer's credentials and qualifications attorneys cpas and enrolled agents can represent any client before the irs in any situation annual filing season program part, uh, participants may represent taxpayers in limited situations if they prepare and sign the tax return meaning if you have a problem and the irs comes back and basically is arguing a position that you took or something like that on the tax return then you might want to have someone represent you in a similar way as a lawyer might do in a situation of, of a crime. Instead of going to court, oftentimes you can have your representative go there so you're not sitting there all day. And the, and the lawyer also often has more uh, ability to, to, to talk to the, the, the court on your behalf. So you got similar things with attorneys and CPAs and enrolled agents when you're dealing with the IRS, you can you can possibly give them a power of attorney and allow them to uh, make decisions on your behalf in that case. So that can be something to keep in mind. You may not, hopefully you don't need that, but if it, it would be nice to have in the event that uh, the IRS comes back with some weird position or something. 
Never sign a, a blank or incomplete return. Taxpayers are responsible for filing a complete and corrected tax return. So uh, review the tax return before signing it. Be sure to ask questions if something is not clear or appears inaccurate. So most people, when they hear that, they're like, how can I possibly review it? Because it's the tax code is quite complicated. That's why I hired someone. And that's the problem. So you are somewhat dependent on the person that you hired because the tax code is complicated. That's why you need someone to hire, but that's why you want to make sure to hire someone you could trust and still look over the tax return. And a good tax preparer will, will usually be able to break down what they're doing in such a way that you can understand it so that you can be comfortable sending in what you're sending in. So any refund should go directly to the taxpayer, not into the preparer's bank account. Review the routing and bank account numbers on the completed return and make sure it's accurate. Taxpayers can report preparer misconduct to the IRS using form 14157, complaint tax return preparer. There's a link to that here. If a tax if a taxpayer suspects a tax return preparer filed or changed their tax return without their consent, they should file form 14157A, tax return preparer fraud or misconduct conduct affidavit. There's a link to that here. So more information below at the links, choosing a tax professional tax time guide, and there's a publication 17 for federal income tax for individuals. There's links to all that stuff here, those links to this in the description.